Okay, this is going to be going up super late on whatever... What is tonight? Thursday night? I guess like Friday <laughs> at like 1 in the morning. I don't know, but... Yeah, this is going to be my Clash of Kings uh, Week 2 match hosted by the APA. So, yeah, I did upload a couple games last week. Now, unfortunately, I was literally not around for any of my teammates games for week two here hopefully i'll be around for week three and i can live calm some of those and upload them so yeah this is going to be my match i believe this was match number four of week two i think at this point we were up two to one we are facing the big bad goaders i think or is it the big bad bug bug bites um, I have no idea. It is the Goaters. Okay. So yeah, we're up against Big Bad Goaters. And at this point in the week, we are currently 2-1. So if I win this game, I put us in a position of being 3-1. But if I lose this game, then we go to tie for the next match where it's 2-2. Two two. So hopefully I can pull out a win here and put us one victory away from winning this week. So we are taking on the Peacher Bros. I've never faced them before. I like I don't mean any disrespect, but I've never heard of them either. So it's kind of cool to be able to play some new players here. So if you guys do enjoy the video, hit that thumbs up button and down below. And yeah, obviously I think at this point, by the time this video is uploaded, the week has already been over. So I'll do a quick little update at the end of the video of the week here but yeah so i'm playing in lower tiers and this time i decided to use our comfy and mega glalie team as opposed to the mega medicham and noivern team that i used in week one just because i kind of wanted to switch things up and i really felt like our comfy and glalie team had a bit of a better matchup than that team anyway so yeah time stamp on your screen to jump right to when the actual battle starts and team preview and stuff so looking at this matchup easily the two biggest threats going into this game are going to be meloetta and rabombi meloetta is z if i'm not mistaken so that with just any type of offensive rabombi is going to be extremely extremely problematic in this matchup however though if i get rid of the steelix then my comfy actually does put in a good amount of work which is definitely something i am going to try to work towards and then unburdened septile actually has a pretty decent matchup as well late game so my two win cons going into this game are going to be calm mind comfy or unburdened septile so let's take a look at our Pokemon here. So our first team member is going to be Comfy. This was running enough speed to outspeed a plus speed natured Saviper, whether it be like naive, jolly, or timid. Because Saviper's matchup is actually honestly not that bad. So if he does bring it, I'm not gonna be surprised. But if he does bring it, then I don't think it would have come over something besides like the Quilladin. Like Quilladin, uh, Quilladin can set up spikes, but Saviper does have a decent uh, check option for our offense especially if he is running something like the shuckleberry so i decided to be careful and ensure running enough speed to outspeed that if it really came down to it but calm mine draining kiss giga drain hp ground hits absolutely everything for some really really good damage so i'm hoping that this will definitely be able to put in a good amount of work our next team member is going to be Mega Galalie, and we are running enough special attack investment to always, always to a KO Blastoise, unless he is like max Spadef, max HP, which I really don't expect him to run on Blastoise in this matchup. So we should always to a KO Blastoise if I'm able to catch it on the switch in after Stealth Rocks, which is going to be absolutely amazing. And then Ice Shard is nice for some type of priority. Double Edge hits everything pretty hard, honestly, besides Blastoise. So we're still going to be able to smack things around. And Earthquake is just kind of a filler move, like it hits Survivor, I guess. I don't know, maybe I could have gotten a different move over Earthquake, but it's really not that big of an issue, I suppose. So we are running enough speed for the Meloetta, and then the rest of our attack investment is in our physical attack here, just so we can do solid damage with Double Edge, Earthquake, or the Ice Shard. And our next team member here is going to be White Herb Sceptile, which again is able to potentially just win late game with the help from Comfy, or Sceptile can help Comfy win late game. And that's kind of how I'm going to try and get this match to go. I really want to try and set up one of those two 
to potentially be able to win late game. So we are running enough speed to outspeed Meloetta because we already don't outspeed Rebombi. So I'm not concerned about outspeeding that. And once we get our Unburden activated, we already outspeed pretty much absolutely everything as it is, which is amazing. So Adam and Max attack, enough speed for the Meloetta, and then we just have the rest in our special attack. So Leaf Storm and Giga Drain can do a good amount of damage to things like Steelix and Blastoise mostly. I don't think he's going to bring Beeboro, but I guess we can Leaf Storm or Giga Drain, one of, the, uh, one of them as well. So our next team member is going to be a mixed, not one well, on mixed defensive, but mostly physically defensive Coolfish, this is basically my best answer to Pangoro. And yes, I know as soon as he goes for knockoff, he gets rid of my Rocky Helmet. But after that, he's going to be doing less damage to me as it is. And I believe I am running enough speed to outspeed a Jolly Pangoro, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think he would run Jolly, but it's just nice to be safe i suppose so spikes are nice if we can get up our hazards dual stab hits basically his entire team and then explosion is really handy in case i need to explode on something like meloetta surviper bibero pangoro or even the robombi although i guess i can just poison jab robombi if it really comes down to it but uh the last move literally could have just been anything i could have gone like taunt destiny bond aqua jet Toxic spikes, I suppose, but yeah, like the last move didn't really have too much merit to it. I just figured explosion is also nice because if I explode in front of the Blastoise, then I can prevent him from going for the Rapid Spin, and that would actually be very, very handy. Speaking of Rapid Spin, we are bringing a very speedy uh, Rotom here to this match. So the thing about Rotom here is that I'm really, really worried about it being used as setup fodder from the Meloetta, which is why I actually have Dark Pulse on it. 72 special attack investment with Dark Pulse ensures that a max HP Meloetta sub is always, always broken. I think 25% is actually the absolute min. So that means that I don't need to worry about it trying to sub on me, and then I can also try to fish for flinches potentially, or I can then go for Will-O-Wisp and go from there. So yeah, although I guess maybe something like Hex or Shadow Ball might have been a little bit better, but Meloetta is just way too scary if it does get a chance to try and uh, set up against me. And then we have Bolt Switch for some type of momentum. Defog here just in case we are able to get rid of hazards if it ultimately does come down to it. Plus, Will-O-Wisp is really nice because we can burn Pangoro, we can burn Steelix, we get some type of chip damage off on the Bibaro, so Viper if it doesn't get the Shed Skin, we can burn the Quilladin as well. So yeah, I figured that this set would probably be our, our best bring to this match here. Like Rotom does have a lot that it can do in this match. It can pivot, it can also gain us good momentum and just be a really good uh, team supporter in the long run, honestly. So. Our final team member is going to be Steelix. This is my only real answer to the combination of Rabombi and Meloetta. So the thing about this set is that if he is Calm Mind Z Focus Blast Meloetta, I get absolutely murdered. And it doesn't even matter <laughs> that I have the Chopple Berry, honestly, dude. Z Meloetta is so so terrifying but if he goes for a non-boosted focus blast or a non-boosted uh, z focus blast i can live the hit and then try to get off some damage with heavy slam honestly i do not expect pirouette meloetta just because we have comfy and comfy obviously does have plus three priority on draining kiss because of its ability so i fully expect a normal Meloetta to come into this match so we can kind of try and check that but I'm hoping that we most likely will just be able to pivot in if Steelix is able to get up rocks then I'll just gladly throw it away to either the Rabombi or the Meloetta because both of those are just absolutely absolutely terrifying in this game honestly so yeah that is going to be our squad for our week two match here let's go ahead and jump into the battle so some of you guys commented on my week one Clash of Kings match and said that you actually kind of like the dark background as opposed to the light background, which, hey, I'm totally fine with. I honestly think that this looks way better than just the regular showdown uh, replay. So let's take a look at our matchup here. Of course, if you guys do enjoy, hit that thumbs up button down below. Comment down below letting me know, do you guys like lower tier drafts or standard drafts? 
personally, I've said this before as well, I love lower tier drafts. I always feel like lower tier Pokemon are just way more fun and way more cool than just a standard Pokemon or just like OU Pokemon in general and I've been like that since I first started playing this game near the end of 4th gen like 20 years ago so yeah let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section below so looking at our matchup here uh, Pichu Bros brought just about everything I did expect which was basically 5 Pokemon in either Quilladin or Surviper which he did end up bringing in uh, bringing the survivors so that was not really that much of a surprise to me because whether it be mixed or just defensive it could actually be really really annoying so regardless of the matchup here my game plan is to hopefully try and win with comfy or septile as for leads i figured that he may just want to lead either his steelix surviper or potentially the pangoro just to see uh, what I potentially wanted to lead with as well. And unless he has something like Modest Specs or Bombi, then there's nothing I should really be too concerned about that he wants to lead with. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this. So I'm going to be leading off with my Rotom as he ends up leading off with the Rabombi. And this, this was actually really bad because there's a few things I could do this turn. I could switch directly into my Steelix. Or I can just stay in to see exactly what he wants to do. Now, unless he is modest choice specs, there is absolutely no chance whatsoever that he has to knock me out. If he's timid specs, I live. If he's life orb, I live. If he's uh, focus slash lead, something like sticky webs, which sticky webs are a little bit annoying. But because I do have defog, I should be straight. So I'm not really too concerned about that. So there's no way that he should be able to one shot me here on turn number one regardless of what he's running unless he does get absolutely lucky so i decided to just go ahead and go straight for the bolt switch as he goes for the moon blast turns out that he is modest choice specs and he gets the 31 percent chance roll uh, I'll, if i remember i'll put it here on the screen but this is actually really bad because not only did I have like a 69% chance to live that, but I get absolutely no damage off on this Rabombi. Now, obviously, I could have switched directly into my Steelix, but I don't think that necessarily would have been too beneficial because he could have just gone straight for a Sticky Web or he could have tried to potentially switch out as well into his own Steelix, which even if he brought in his Steelix, me staying in Rotom, I really felt was ultimately the better play I could have made. It's just that I got really, really unlucky here turn one and he got the damage roll in his favor. And this is really bad because now immediately at the start of this game, I am on the back foot, so I need to find some way to hopefully try and bounce back with a 5 to 6 a Mons at this point. And the thing about that too is that if he does ultimately end up having sticky webs on this Rabombi later in the match, I can just lose because of that unless I am able to get rid of not only the Steelix but also weaken the Surviper for my comfy to hopefully try and win so yeah we got a bit of an uphill battle here to uh to start the game off with so i'm gonna decide to bring in my steelix expecting him to bring in the blastoise i do go straight for the toxic which is really nice because now i can get some type of residual damage on that and then i bring in my quillfish expecting him to go for the skull but he ends up switching directly into his pangoro and this is actually really good for me because quillfish was my answer to pangoro so I don't mind just trying to weaken this if it ultimately comes down to it. As it turns out that he's not Scarfed, I do do a little bit of damage with the Liquidation. And it turns out that he is actually not Banded, which means I can live another Earthquake here and at least try to get up one layer of Spikes to just try and chip whatever I can down ultimately. So I do get up that Spike as he goes for the knockoff. And he's going to take that little bit of chip damage. And now I'm in a position of where my Quillfish pretty much does nothing the remainder of this battle. Which actually really does suck. But this is where me having Explosion is going to kind of come in a little bit handy. Because I can just click Explosion here and there should be no reason 
for him to switch into a Steelix here on my Quillfish. Even if he decides to bring the Blastoids here, it's going to take a pretty hefty chunk of damage. And if I can take down this Pangoro, then that should be pretty handy for me because I don't have to worry about it going for the parting shot or spamming knockoff which is amazing so I do decide to go for the explosion here as down goes the Pangoro and this is pretty handy as I bring in my Steelix he brings in his Robombi now this turn was very very iffy because he could have either brought in Robombi or Blastoise and I had to choose between either bringing in my Steelix or potentially bringing in my Sceptile the main reason I would bring in Sceptile is because I would expect him to bring in Blastoise. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that I guess maybe Steelix is probably my safer play here. Because even if he brings in Blastoise, his main priority might be to just go straight for the Rapid Spin. So then I can switch into Sceptile or bring in Mega Glalie at that point. So that's ultimately why I brought in Steelix here. And it does actually kind of end up helping me out here because he brought in his Robombi so now I can choose to either go for the Earthquake, go for Heavy Slam or try to get on my Stealth Rocks and honestly getting on my Rocks here is definitely not the play that I should make because he still has Blastoise at a very high amount of HP but if he thinks that I'm going to predict Blastoise to come in and not go for the Heavy Slam then it's probably in my best interest to go for the Earthquake but at the same time if he does stay in, goes for something like Hidden Power of Fire, he could get the 62% chance roll and 2 a KO me because I am Choppleberry. So honestly, in this scenario, I feel like I'm kind of forced to go for the Heavy Slam. Just because this Rebombi is just such a giant, giant problem. It's taking no damage because he got the roll turn 1 and I'm... Again, just such in a bad, bad spot. So I go for the Heavy Slam as he unfortunately makes the switch into the Blastoise. And this really, really sucks because if I had gone for the Earthquake there, that would have been absolutely amazing because after the Earthquake damage, this Blastoise actually would have been in range of where my Freeze Dry would have been able to knock him out. And now, not only do I need to worry about the Scald Burn, but I also am fearing the fact that he could get a good amount of damage off because he is in torrent range. So if he crits me here and burns me, that's like the worst case scenario in this turn. So I go for the freeze dry just hoping that maybe I could get some justice for turn 1 but I don't as he goes for the scald does a huge huge chunk of damage to me and in comes the Rabombi as I then go directly for the ice shard. Now, I initially did not go straight for Ice Shard. I was really contemplating on whether or not it would be worth me switching into either my Steelix or to my Comfy because in this scenario, me wanting to switch out I feel like is very, very obvious. So ultimately, there's not that much merit to try to go for the Moonblast or the Bug Buzz. So he probably would want to try and predict my Steelix to come in which made me think well then maybe I can bring in Comfy because if he has Hidden Power of Fire or Hidden Power of Ground then my Comfy can live both of those hits but I guess in the end I do need to still try and get off some type of damage on this Rebombi just because of how big of a massive threat it really is to the remainder of my team and the lower I put this Rebombi the easier it will be for my Comfy to be able to knock it out because at this point we already know that this is a modest choice specs Rebombi there's no doubt about it whatsoever so I go for the Ice Shard as he does tank it he is going to knock me out with the hidden power, what I thought was fire or ground. So I bring him my Steelix as he goes for another hidden power. And it turns out that he's hidden power ground as I go for the earthquake expecting him to try and switch out. So the thing about this turn is that even if I went for heavy slam, even though he stayed in, he then got a free switch into Meloetta or he brought in his own Steelix or he brought in Surviper which Surviper does learn Flamethrower, if I'm not mistaken. It's either Flamethrower or Fire Blast. I think it's Flamethrower. Yeah, it learns, it learns some type of fire move. So even if he had been KO'd here by my Heavy Slam, Surviper would have come in, potentially knocked me out, or his Steelix would have come in, potentially Earthquake me, or Meloetta would have come in, tanked the hit, and then just calm mind up and absolutely raped me 
with a uh, Phytanium Z Focus Blast. So I went for the Earthquake on the off chance that he did expect me to go for Heavy Slam and potentially tried to bring in the Steelix. But obviously that did not pan out as he does end up going for the Hidden Power Fighting. My Choppa Berry does pop. And now I'm in a position of where I can either go for another Earthquake or I could try to get up my Stealth Rocks and hope to allow either Sceptile or Comfy to win. At this point, worst case scenarios are that Surviper is Shucka Berry and Meloetta is Z-Move. If Surviper is not Shucka Berry and Meloetta is not Z-Move, then my Sceptile does have a really, really good chance to win the match right now. So that's what I'm trying to play towards as I decide to go ahead and get on my Stealth Rocks this turn if I'm not mistaken. But I know for a fact he is Hidden Power Fighting which is why I bring in my Comfy here. As he goes for another one this will allow me to now go for the Calm Mind as he brings in his Steelix. Unfortunately he does have leftovers so even if I were to get a crit here and even if I did have a chance to knock him out with the crit Hidden Power Ground at plus one. It's not going to be good for me, but any damage I get off on this will end up helping out my Sceptile to potentially try and win in the long run. So I go for the Hidden Power Ground as he does tank the hit and he will be able to knock me out with the Iron Head as I bring in my Sceptile here. My best play is to go straight for the Leaf Storm because this activates my Unburden. I'm at plus two speed. I guarantee I'll speed absolutely everything. And now I have my Acrobatics boosted, which is also really, really amazing. So down goes Steelix, as then in comes his Surviper. The only way that this Surviper should live this hit if he does have the Shuckleberry. And that is pretty much absolutely worst case scenario. This was definitely something I thought about while I was building the squad. But I figured that I would be able to weaken it if it ultimately came down to it. So at this point, if I don't knock out the Surviper then it comes down to whether or not Meloetta is Z-moved or not. So I have to go for the best move that I have, and that is Earthquake. As I go for the Earthquake, unfortunately, it does turn out that he has the Shucka Berry, and uh, that is basically going to be game. So yeah, a bit of an unlucky game here. Uh, the fact that I lost Rotom very early on, was really unfortunate although I can't really say if me keeping Rotom later in the match would have changed the outcome here it might have made it closer or it might have given me a better chance to win but I let my team down here week two and currently uh, at the moment at the end of this match we were two and two the rest of the week played out and it ultimately came down to game number seven where it was my boy Harris is awesome. For those of you who have been with my channel for the past like year or two, you will know I've mentioned Harris multiple times throughout a lot of videos. And it was down to Harris against Hiker Toad and we literally ended up losing because of luck. And that's really unfortunate too, because if I had won my game, then we wouldn't have to have worried about a game seven. But uh, Goaters got lucked out and they were able to win game seven and win week two. So we unfortunately are now one and one when we realistically should have been two and two. But hey, luck in hacks is a part of Pokemon and it's just, it is what it is. So yeah, if we are able to make it to playoffs and we face the Goaters again, then hopefully we will be able to beat them then. Because right now, regular season doesn't count that much because if we make it to playoffs regardless, then the regular season games didn't matter. So all the losses in the regular season are not that important. So hey, we can potentially get a revenge in playoffs and we'll just see how things go from there. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy this, hit that thumbs up button down below. With that being said, I will see you all tomorrow on... When is it going to go up? Yeah, it's going up like super late on Friday or like early saturday morning i don't even know no no i'm getting my days mixed up friday morning or super late thursday bro there's like 15 minutes left so yeah this is gonna be like at 1 or 2 a.m on friday so i'll see you all on friday for sure and then the rest of the week as well so thank you for watching later everybody
Cause my brain and heart are both tied in the knot And this hinders me from crying a lot This causing me to show no emotion But when I said I cared I wasn't joking But I guess it's too late for me to become broken For now, I'm living with no more pain, tears or hoping I'm just coasting Yeah, I said I'm coasting No more pain, tears, and hoping For real